It's Wednesday, March 27th. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Loved ones continue to mourn a Long Island NYPD officer who was gunned down in a traffic stop in Queens. There's a candlelight vigil tonight for Officer Jonathan Diller in his hometown at Brady Park in Massapequa Park. The 31 year old was shot in the torso in Far Rockaway Monday night during what police say was a tug of war with the passenger in a car. His hometown is heartbroken. Um, just it's just devastating, you know, and such a young family, you know, it's uh, all hearts go out to him. The community here in the Massapequa is, you know, is, is a tremendous tight knit community. It's uh, very scary. We know that they always put their lives on the line, you know, for the public. And it's very, very sad, very sad. Every time they go out there, you never know whether they're going to come back or not. Services for the husband and father of one are tomorrow and Friday at the Massapequa Funeral Home. His funeral will be at St. Rose of Lima Roman Catholic Church on Saturday. Officer Diller will be laid to rest at St. Charles Cemetery in Farmingdale. And today we're learning more about two suspects being held in connection with the shooting. Alleged shooter Guy Rivera and driver Lindy Jones both have extensive criminal records, according to the Queens DA. Authorities have not said if any charges have been filed against them. Stay with Newsday as we continue to follow the latest in the death of Officer Diller. Just click Get More below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. Jury deliberations are expected to begin today in the trial of a former NYPD officer from the island accused of killing his childhood friend. Eric Allen of North Massapequa is charged in the 2020 shooting death of Christopher Curo in Farmingdale. Prosecutors say Allen did it after receiving insulting messages from Curo. The defense claims the shooting was self-defense. We tried to do the right thing to help the family and to help Chris. But when Mr. Caro found out that he was communicating with his family, he really became enraged. He became angry. Now, if convicted, Allen faces 25 years to life in prison. Recovery efforts continue today for six construction workers presumed dead after the Baltimore Bridge collapse. This happened early yesterday morning after a container ship slammed into it after losing power. Maryland and federal officials say it appears to be an accident. The missing workers were a part of a construction crew. A big day for congestion, congestion pricing today. The MTA board will be voting to finalize the plan. Most drivers could start paying $15 to drive below 60th Street in Manhattan as soon as this summer. We have a winner. One Mega Millions winning ticket worth over a billion dollars was sold in New Jersey. But a million dollar winner was sold here on the island. Someone in New Jersey overcame the odds last night winning the $1.13 billion mega jackpot. The numbers 7, 11, 22, 29, 38 and 4. There are also smaller prizes. A $2 million winner sold upstate and $2 million winners sold in New York, including one at the Sitco on Forest Avenue in Locust Valley. Now, you still have a shot at $865 million in tonight's Powerball jackpot. Good luck. Sports Now, the Rangers have punched their ticket to the playoffs. Trocek back to Fox. He's got room. He scores! There it is! Adam Fox wins it in overtime. Jericho native Adam Fox with the game winner in overtime. The Blue Shirts beat the Philadelphia Flyers 6-5 to last night at the Garden. The win gave the Rangers their third consecutive playoff run and their third consecutive 100-point season. Well done. A big change in the NFL. The league has radically revamped its kickoff rules, saying the changes will improve safety and make the game more exciting. Starting this fall, for a standard kickoff, the ball will be kicked from the 35-yard line with the 10-kick coverage players lined up at the opposing 40. Now, the return team will have at least nine blockers lined up in the setup zone between the 30 and 35-yard lines. Up to two returners will be allowed inside the 20. Our NFL columnist Tom Rock explains. It's really one of the most uh, drastic and dramatic changes that the NFL has made to its rules in quite some time. And it's, it's really going to look very different from any football play that that you've probably ever seen from watching an NFL game. This changes the direction completely. Uh, it eliminates a lot of the risks of injury, but it also adds an element to 
uh, of excitement, an element of excitement, and it it allows uh, some of the, some of the most dynamic playmakers in the league to all of a sudden be back there and, and returning kickoffs. We'll see what happens. Thank you, Tom. Read more about the rule change on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Yankees fans will have more train options to get to the games this year. Metro North is bringing back game day service to Yankee Stadium. That means LIRR riders can take the train to the stadium from Grand Central Madison. The Yanks home, the Yanks home opener is April 5th against the Toronto Blue Jays. Good luck. Weather permitting, the Mets open their season tomorrow, and today we are talking unique eats at the stadium. Laura Albanese has a look at what's new on the menu at City Field. Happy Burger! Happy Burger, guys! Oh my God. It's the most magical time of year. The days are getting longer, baseball is around the corner, and baseball food is right here, right now. Let's go see what's new at City Field. Mets fans are going to have a ton of new foods to choose from, and we're talking some really unique options, like Chef Ambrell's fantastic pepperoni nachos, or even a rainbow cookie egg roll. And then there are the fancied up versions of old classics, like Chef Adam Rickman's French onion soup burger. There's a restaurant in Brooklyn called Seniors on Nostrand Avenue. That was the inspiration for the onion roll. He would use like onion soup in the chopped meat, and when it's served during the games, you'll actually get a little bit of onion soup au jus to dip it in. They're also bringing back Taste of Queens and Coca-Cola food truck. Those are those two kiosks of rotating vendors that showcase local restaurants. We've also got Nolita staple Prince Street pizza, and fans of the Keith Hernandez burger, this is your time to celebrate. After years off the menu, it's making a comeback. Ew, I took. <laughs> Some foods definitely stood out among the rest. We're looking at you, Pig Beach. They're coming back with a brisket loaded mac and cheese. So look at that brisket. This is definitely going to be a really popular staple this year. The brisket falls off the floor. Another standout was Comac's own Chitty's Cheesesteak and its insane Chitty Dog. This thing is topped with steak, jalapenos, and red onions. Great addition. I got some cheese on there. And yep, that's brown sugar Thai milk tea. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty full. See you around the ballpark. This has been Laura Albany's reporting for News ATV. Laura, I have to join you next time. Everything looks so good. Read more about what's new at City Field on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Awanta High School freshman has earned a spot on the U.S. Junior National Karate Team. Virginia Huey has a story you'll see only in Newsday. At 6 feet, 157 pounds, Isaiah Jackson of Wanta is a champion on the mat. He's uh, very gifted, very talented. This week, the 14-year-old black belt will put his martial arts medal to the test against some of the best fighters in the world at the USA Open International Tournament in Fort Worth, Texas. I was so excited to finally realize all my hard work and talent really paid off. Isaiah earned a spot on Team USA after winning gold at the national championships and team trials last summer. I am overly proud of my child. Um, he has achieved so much in the years that he's been doing karate. Isaiah says his childhood love for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sparked his interest in martial arts. He first walked onto a karate mat when he was just six years old and started winning medals and trophies soon after. I love karate because of the competitive atmosphere. These days, the Wanta High School freshman practices six days a week. He's really motivated when you kind of give him like a hard obstacle. He just sees it as a, another hurdle that he has to overcome. And that's how his brain is wired. Isaiah says the discipline and work ethic that he's gained over seven years of training have helped him become a better person off the mat as well. The sport taught me a lot about time and dedication. I didn't used to always have the highest grades. I wasn't always the smartest. However, through and throughout the sport, it's gotten me. It's helped me understand that perseverance and dedication is really what you need to excel in life. Isaiah heads to Texas with a new personalized black belt around his waist and his eyes on the prize. Win gold, that's it. For Newsday TV, I'm Virginia Huey. Great story. For more stories like this, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box.
We continue to celebrate Women's History Month today with the story of a Long Island civil rights activist who is still fighting for equal treatment. Steve Langford has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Eighty-six-year-old Lily B. Crowder of Middle Island is playing a piece she wrote called Yesterday, a fitting tune for a woman whose journey from the Depression-era South to 21st century Long Island is one for the history books. Miss Lily, from South Carolina to Suffolk County, can you tell us about your life's mission? My life's mission has been to accommodate all that I could with people and with helping make the world a better place. When Crowder was studying for her Bachelor of Science degree in architectural engineering at South Carolina State College in the mid-1950s, her eyes were open to the world around her when students organized a boycott of local businesses. Many of my classmates got expelled. I never saw them again. This engineering graduate couldn't find work in South Carolina, so she came to New York, where she also met rejection, but not for long. My very first job was at 6 Barrack Street. I walked into a place in 1960, and the owner of the business said to me, when do you want to start? Later, Crowder helped plan and build schools at the New York City Board of Education for more than 30 years. After retiring, she moved to Long Island, where she co-founded the Brookhaven Rosa Parks Democratic Association and mentored leaders like Suffolk County Sheriff Errol Toulon. The fact that I was an elder person and could speak about my background and having been in the civil rights movement, it sort of gave the younger people the incentive to become involved. I think I've made a significant difference in the lives of many young people, many young women especially. Lily B. Crowder says when she was in college, she thought they had conquered it all, that the world would be a kinder, better place by now. Now she says she sees signs that things are moving backwards, but adds that's what keeps her going. From yesterday to tomorrow, Steve Langford for Newsday TV. Steve, thank you. You can read more about Lily's story. Go to Newsday.com, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Checking out your hyper-local forecast, mostly cloudy today, highs in the mid-50s. Tomorrow, rain slightly cooler with lows in the 50s. And here's a look at your future cast. We start to see heavy rain move in tonight and continues through the week. Looking at your seven-day forecast now, spring showers, but for Good Friday, we should be in the clear. We'll let you know if anything changes for the weekend. That's your seven-day forecast. Long Island weather is brought to you by Home Tax Saver, PTRC Incorporated. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in a minute.